Hi, thanks for joining us for today's message from Calvary and Lake Havasu. We are closing out our Ripple Effect series with a message from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. Life Notes can be downloaded from our website at calvaryaz.com forward slash life notes. Here's Pastor Chad along with some special guests. I hope you enjoyed today's message. Hey, you can have a seat and grab your Bible or your Bible app and turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 is our text today. And if you don't have a Bible with you and you're in any of our campuses, then uh, grab one of the Bibles in the seats around you. Uh, Although North Campus, you guys might have a table with some Bibles on it. I'm not sure. I haven't checked that out yet. But anyway, uh, we've got our Parker Campus. We've got our North Campus. We've got our Sweetwater Campus all joining us. And so this is an exciting day. If, uh, uh, but if you uh, will find one of those Bibles, turn to page 964. Page 964. You'll be able to follow along with us in our text today. And if you don't have a Bible and you want one, then just take one. And for many of our campuses, just go ahead and take one because we want you to have God's Word and read God's Word. If you're joining us online and you don't have a Bible and you want one, ask for one. We'll be happy to get you a Bible because we want you to read God's Word because if you read and apply God's Word, we know that God will change your life. Hey, how many of you are retired? Okay, a lot of hands go up. How many of you want to retire someday? Okay, the rest of the hands go up. Well, if you want to retire, I hope you are making you know, plans for that, getting ready for that, because uh, according to a survey I read this week, only 54% of Americans have a dedicated retirement account. Only 54%. So some of you are thinking, hey, I'm barely below average. Um, and, you know, but you gotta make, you got to make provision if you want to get there. And some of you are like, well, that's really nice to know, but what does that have to do with following Jesus? I'm so glad you asked. (laughs) Because, see, here's the thing. Jesus spoke to this whole idea of investing for the future. And if you're a follower of Jesus, if you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, you believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins and was raised from the dead, and you've made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, then I want you to hear the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. He says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy nor thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where your treasure is, there your heart will will be also. Hey, we are wrapping up our Ripple Effect series, and uh, I've got some friends to help me share uh, today's message with you, and uh, I want to introduce them. So uh, Amber Smith is our serve director. Uh, she works here at Calvary. She's the one leading our community ministry outreaches. Uh, Addie Smith, no relation, is uh, a college student at Northern Arizona University and has been with us uh, on trips to Honduras and to uh, Zambia. And then Alan Dugan is joining us also. Alan is a retired firefighter. Hey, speaking of retirement, good job. Uh, and a retired firefighter. And he is, has been with us to Baja on our trip there uh, multiple times. And so today we're discussing kingdom investing and the ripple effect it has on life change. And so I want you to know that your generosity has a ripple effect on life change. Your generosity has a ripple effect on life change. So we've been talking this month about how God blesses us as we give and how God blesses others through our generosity, through your generosity. And so what we want to do is we want to share some real life, real time examples of the power of your generosity. And again, your generosity Our generosity as a church has a ripple effect on life change. They're going to pop the slide up there eventually. Yes, there we go. And so, uh, in other words, what we're talking about is your investment in eternity. So, over the last 11 months, so just this year, we've had 231 baptisms. Um, Yeah, you can celebrate that. Um, So that's 231 people 
that have committed their life to Jesus and proclaim to the world that they love Jesus, which is really awesome. It is indeed awesome. Also, and we mentioned this a couple weeks ago, attendance-wise, uh, over all of our campuses, we've averaged 1,992 people a weekend showing up in person and uh, over 1,400 people joining us online on a weekly basis. I think that's really cool as well. Yeah, and if you guys didn't know, we <clears throat> actually have five different campuses. So we have our Sweetwater campus here, we have our McCulloch campus, um, we have online campus, and we also have our Parker campus, um, and they have been averaging 211 people on a weekend, which is amazing, and God is doing some incredible work in Parker through the ministry there at Calvary. And God has blessed us so that we can open a North Campus. Um, and so they are under construction in their sanctuary. They're still meeting in a small room right now. Um, but our official launch is gonna be in January, um, but they will have Christmas Eve services there. I think they're gonna have two Christmas Eve services. So that's really exciting. It is. Uh, our, week, our weekly student ministry, by the way, Pastor Sean uh, earlier at Sweetwater it made the announcements. Uh, he's our, our Havasu student pastor. And so, uh, but we have 80 students a week that we average. And then, uh, Addie, you worked with our children's ministry while you were here. Uh, so talk about that. We have 214 uh, children with us on the weekends across all of our services. And that, that's cool, 214 kids, yeah. And then our Celebrate Recovery on Monday nights, uh, we're getting ready, to, yeah, some adherence here. So hey, we're getting ready to launch Celebrate Recovery in Parker, but our Celebrate Recovery on Monday nights averages 150 participants, which, by the way, is more than double the size of the average church in America. So I know, that's kind of cool, isn't it? And we have 103 different life groups at Calvary um, with over 1,200 people in those life groups, which is really incredible. And if you're not connected to a life group, I would encourage you, we'll have signups the first couple weekends in January. Sign up so that you can experience the benefit of godly community. So in the last 12 months, uh, Calvary, and this, is, this one really makes my heart happy because uh, this is like the first time we've ever crossed this boundary, but over the last 12 months, Calvary as a church has given over $1.2 million to mission causes. Isn't that cool? You guys are like stinking generous. Uh, I'm just uh, so proud of that. And uh, locally, so our local missions is just over 400,000 and our global missions piece of that is uh, almost $800,000 that we give to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus in Havasu, in Parker, and to the ends of the earth. So uh, part of that is that we have funded well over 100 freshwater wells in the country of Mozambique, one of the poorest countries on the face of the earth. Wow. Yeah. We've also um, sponsored two different compassion centers as a church. And as Calvary, we fundraise for 500 children. So you guys all sponsor over 500 children, which is awesome. Well, two years ago, uh, Calvary partnered with Baja Bound Express uh, Ministries to build homes in Ensenada, Mexico. And in that two years, we've had over 100 Calvary members uh, go down there. We've built five houses in four trips. We've gotten 15 adults and 17 children off of dirt floors onto concrete with roofs over their head and walls. Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah. And we also have 3,600 missionaries that Calvary sponsors around the world through the Southern Baptist Convention. And so um, how this works is they work for the Southern Baptist Convention and they get paid a salary and retirement and insurance like any other normal job so that these missionaries don't have to leave where they're working and go fundraise. And so every dollar that you give to Calvary, 20% of that goes directly to missions and then half of that goes directly to fund these missionaries all over the world. And we actually have a couple from Calvary right now in South Asia uh, doing missionary work with the Southern Baptist Convention. Yeah. So all of these and more are resulting in life change, okay? So this is our investment in eternity. As a church, this is what we're doing. And that's part of Calvary doing mission, but it's only part of it. The second thing I want you to know is about the personal impact of missions. 
So we've taken four international mission trips this year. Honduras, uh, working with Compassion. Zambia, where we've been trying to uh, start uh, a Celebrate Recovery and did uh, evangelism in schools. Uh, and two trips to Baja to build houses for families. And uh, Addie Smith participated in Honduras and Zambia. Alan Dugan participated in Baja trips. Actually, Alan has been like a, a Baja uh, obsessive person since the first trips because he's been on every trip we've taken. So uh, a little bit of ownership there. Hey, I just want to ask you guys, uh, first off, what did you experience on your mission trips? Uh, uh, and Alan, I'm going to start uh, with you. Okay. Well, initially, I was just excited I'd get to go build a house. That's, that was the thing. Um, but when we got there, uh, you know, we gathered around and we heard the family's story. Uh, this particular, for the first family, was living in a corner of a warehouse with a stack of pallets separating them. And uh, it was kind of like, okay, they, need, they have a need. Um, so then we started building the house and we got pretty much four walls up, part of the roof up in four hours. Uh, kind of what struck me is the family actually spent the night, that first night, in the house. Uh, the next day we came in, we finished up the house, pretty much everything uh, except for painting. And again, the family spent the night. Uh, this time they had a locking door, and it's like things we take for granted. And I'm like, ah, okay. Uh, and the next day of, uh, we finished up, and the local pastor came and blessed the house, and we stood around the circle, and we handed the keys to each other, and we got to say what we, how we were feeling. And uh, at that point, it was like, I just felt like, okay, I know where I need to be. This, this is it. So that was it for me. That was the first experience. So God met you in that moment of the, the blessing with the keys. That's really cool. Absolutely. That's really cool. Addie, how about you? What did you experience uh, in Honduras and Zambia? Oh, I got to experience so many different things um, throughout those trips. I got to see the Compassion Center that Calvary built, meet the little girl, Maybelline, that our Cal uh, kids ministry sponsors, which was so cool um, for both me and to come back and tell my kids about it. Um, but I also experienced a lot of things in Zambia, um, the people, and um, ultimately in both of those places, I experienced the poverty um, in both places, and it was life-changing to see these people living in shacks that we wouldn't even like consider living in here and like burning their trash, which is something that we take for granted because I do have a trash a guy that comes and picks up my trash, but they have to burn it there. Um, so the smallest things that we don't even think about here um, are luxuries. And so seeing that and really understanding how grateful I should be for this wonderful life that I get to live um, was a huge thing that I experienced there and that um, really changed my life. So going on these trips, you get out of your comfort zone, you're out of your normal routine, um, and it allows us to hear God in new and different ways that we normally wouldn't in our day-to-day -day life. So on these trips, what did God teach you? Who are you gonna ask first? Addie, you can go <laughs> first, sorry. <laughs> Um, oh, God taught me so many different things um, about his people and himself, um, but the biggest thing that I think I was taught was that our stories really do have power. Um, I grew up in a church, and so my testimony is like the kind of classic church kid testimony. I didn't really feel like it had a lot of power. Um, until I was standing in front of a thousand high school students in Zambia, Africa, telling them about how God changed my life and realizing that the fact that I was all the way across the country as a 17 year old, as their peer, basically, um, telling them about how God changed my life and that they should follow him too because he can change their life, I realized that Every encounter that I've had with God has power and has purpose, and that was one of the biggest things that God taught me that I'm still applying to my life today. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, for me, um, as a young child growing up in church, uh, you know, I always heard about the missions and missions in Africa and in India, and I was like, I don't want to go to Africa. I don't want to go to India. So God doesn't want me to be a missionary. And uh, so what I've learned here, what God has taught me is that, you know, he calls very few people to go to Africa and India. He calls them. But most of us, you know, our mission field is across the street or next door. 
or in Mexico. <laughs> All right, so Alan, let's just continue with you. How are you different because you participated in missions? How, how, how are you different because you've been to Baja four times? Um, humble, grateful for what we've got here in the United States. Uh, but the, the, the biggest thing is joy. Um, again, you know, growing up in church, you hear about, you know, I've got the joy, joy, joy down in my heart, and God's, uh, Paul's joy in prison, and it's like, you know, I, I don't ever remember really feeling that joy, but when the house is done, and you're handing the keys to those people, and you see the joy in their face, um, and you know that God has used your hands to do this, to you do his work on earth, there's a godly joy in my heart that it's just, I can't even describe other than you who have had experienced joy know that feeling. Hey, I want to I want to uh, ask you to tell a little bit just uh, about your uh, perspective as someone who grew up uh, faithful in church, but your profession really didn't allow you to serve, and and just what God has really taught you uh, about serving now. Okay, uh, so as he mentioned, I was a firefighter paramedic for 35 years, and uh, you know the schedule. Although it's set, the days change. So I could never commit to being a Sunday school teacher, a baseball coach, soccer coach, any of those things because I was, my days were always different. And so, you know, I always felt like I was missing something, uh, but I didn't know what. And uh, so when I retired, came out here, I was right at the Southern Baptist uh, Pastors Conference here for Arizona, and they were looking for volunteers to do things. And so I had a side-by-side, -side, so I volunteered. First time I met Robert. And uh, we went out there, and, and I was like, wow, okay, if this is what God wants me to do, I think I could suffer a little more, go off for a little more. That's, I'm good with that. Um, and then uh, it just continued on. It's like, wow, this, I like this. I feel happy. I feel content. And, you know, through the years, I took the little test, you know, what's your gift? And I, I didn't really know. I mean, like, nothing was really definitive. Uh, so when I came back from that trip, I'm telling my daughter, actually, when I got from back Baja my first time, I was telling my daughter, I said, hey, you know, this happened, and this happened, and I said, I think I know what God wants me to do. He wants me to serve, and she laughs at me. She goes, Dad, you know, why didn't you ask me? I could have told you that years ago. You're, you're, a, you're a firefighter paramedic for 35 years. You were serving people, so that's, that's your thing. <laughs> uh, you know, you served for money, and because you wanted to help people, and now you're serving Jesus, uh, and you talked about contentment, and I love that, uh, that piece of it, so thanks for sharing that. So, Addie, uh, what about you? What did God, you know, how did you change because you went on these trips? Because, uh, you, man, you've been traveling full this last uh, <laughs> year. But uh, what, what did God really do in your life? Um, he's done so much for my life this past year, and I think I can really contribute that to um, the trips that I've been on and the missions that I've done just working for him. But the biggest change that I've seen is the closeness um, to God that I've experienced in my life. I've just gotten so much closer to him and those trips really provided me a foundation for going into this next st stage as I went off to college. Um, I sought out a church and I found people that were Christ-centered and I think that was truly because I got to experience so many things that we don't get to experience here. Um, seeing the people there and the joy that they had and um, getting to grow in my faith because of the experiences that I had. And that's truly just because I said yes to God. Um, I saw an opportunity and he put that opportunity there for a reason and I prayed about it and I decided to take it and run with it. And because of that, God has revealed my gifts. He's revealed um, my purpose. And I truly just think that you need to say yes to God in order for him to grow you. I got out of my comfort zone, and because of that, I have just grown so much closer to God, and I've been blessed by him, and it's all because I said yes and worked for the mission um, and worked for his kingdom and truly invested in him. Hey, thank you for sharing. Both of you, thank you for sharing uh, your stories. You guys want to give my hand, you can, because uh, I like hearing it. Hey, we want to uh, kind of close with the challenge, the challenge. I mean, we talked about how the ripple effect of investing in God's kingdom as a church. Uh, we talked about some personal experiences in missions. Uh, 
And Jesus taught us to store up treasures in heaven, not on earth. And so there's two ways that we want to challenge you to do that. The first way is simply this. I'm going to challenge you to invest in the kingdom, to give generously from the resources that God has given to you. Yeah, and the first way that you do this is by tithing. And tithing is how um, God uses to support the total ministry of the church. And so um, tithing is important because it's the beginning step of generosity. Um, it's the beginning point of being obedient to Jesus with your resources and finances. Um, and it's tithing is 10% of your income. And, and when we tithe, it's a way to say thank you to God for what he's done in our life and also to say that I trust you, God, and I trust that you're going to provide for me what I need. See, when we tithe, we get to our, express our love and devotion to God um, and show I, I'm willing to sacrifice my resources to say thank you and to follow you and to pour out my worship um, to you and trust you with my finances. We trust God with our salvation. We can also trust God with our finances and the things that he's given us here on earth. And I just wanna encourage you, if you want to grow in your faith or take that next step in trusting God, try tithing and see what God does in your life. Yeah. Uh, by the way, 10% of your income means if you don't make any, any money, then God doesn't expect you to give money. Uh, that's, that's how that works. I've had some people say, why do you preach on tithing? I don't have an income. And I go, well, if you don't have an income, then you are tithing. Think about it. 10% of nothing is what? Nothing. No, it's nothing. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's, it, tithing is so uh, across the board equal for, mm -hmm. for people because you're not trying to just outgive each other. You're saying, I want to be obedient uh, to this. Whether you make a little or a lot, uh, it, it's uh, our way of just saying, God, I love you. Hey, I also want to challenge you to invest in the kingdom by supporting Limitless. Uh, you know, we kicked this off about 10 months ago where we were raising money to, to say, hey, we want to build for the future of Calvary. Uh, we've already met some goals in that. Uh, we've paid off our Parker campus, pausing for the cheers in Parker. Uh, we, uh, we're about $600,000 away from having the money uh, cash on hand to build the mezzanine and make the other improvements that are needed here at the Sweetwater campus next summer. Uh, we crossed the $1.4 million mark in giving since last February. So praise God again for your generosity. Uh, and, uh, and none of that even includes the money that we're spending to upgrade the North Campus right now. So I, I just praise God for the generosity. But if you have money left over after you tithe, I would love for you to invite, uh, to invite you to participate in Limitless. Yeah, other ways that you can be generous is by sponsoring kids with compassion. Um, it's $43 a month to sponsor a kid with compassion and that provides food for them, medical care, education, opportunities to go to church and hear the gospel. Um, and so, Addy, you went with me in Honduras. Is it real? Yes, and it's life-changing for those kids. Yeah. Um, other ways that you can invest in the kingdom is by sponsoring kids and youth to go to camp. We have camps for kids fourth grade all the way through 12th grade. Um, and it's life-changing for them. Again, it takes them out of their comfort zone, their routine, and they get to hear God in a new um, way. I, I know kids that have given their life to Jesus at camp. I know kids that have been called into ministry at camp, um, and it's worth the investment. Or you can sponsor someone to go on a mission trip. I know every mission trip I've been on, I've had people help me go on those trips, or you can help um, fund a, a a Baja house. Is it, is it worth the investment, Alan, to... to... Oh, absolutely. Um, just real quick, I know I got 10 seconds. Uh, <laughs> what they found is getting kids off the dirt uh, increases their life expect or mortality rate by 50% and increases their cognitive ability up to 96%, just getting them off dirt onto concrete. Hey, and Alan, what does it cost to build one home in Baja? I don't have the exact number, but it's a little over $10,000, so anybody wants to write a check, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, what a great way to honor God at Christmas. I want to build a house for somebody in Baja. Maybe mm -hmm. we can send three teams next time. Yeah. We got the people. There's a waiting list. Hey, uh, another way you can invest in the kingdom, uh, and this uh, applies especially to those of you who already raised your hand and said you're retired, uh, is through estate planning by planning to give a portion of your estate to the kingdom of God. 
And, and you can do that. I mean, by the way, I want you to bless your kids. I want you to bless your grandkids. If God has blessed you with great grandkids, I want you to bless them. But if you've been generous toward God in this life, why not take a portion, you know, why not tithe your estate and say, hey, I'm gonna give that to the kingdom of God. You can give it to Calvary. We'll use it uh, in perpetuity for uh, ministry. You can give it to Compassion. You can give it to, uh, you can designate it for Baja and build homes for the next, you know, 100 years if Jesus waits that long. It's just a way for us to think way beyond ourselves with a ripple effect that's gonna impact people for Jesus for generations to come. By the way, we're in the middle of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of the world as Americans, the generations that have been so faithful in building up wealth or passing it down to their kids and their grandkids. And uh, I, what I would love to do is see Calvary actually start an endowment fund that uh, funds ministry and missions uh, for decades to come again, if Jesus waits that long. And uh, so that's just a way that, that we can invest in the kingdom. And let me just give you a, a real personal example of what it means when we invest in the kingdom, the kind of ripple effect we have that a lot of times we never think about or, or recognize or get to see. I was 25 years old, I was in seminary, finishing up my, my last year of my master's degree. And uh, I got a phone call from a, a little old lady who my mom worked for when she was my age. So this is going back, way back. And, and this lady said, hey, I wanna send somebody on a mission trip to Africa, to Kenya, and uh, nobody in my church wants to go. Can I pay your way to go to, to Kenya to tell people about Jesus? And I went, yeah, yeah, you can do that. I actually asked Merelda, I paused and said, can I go to Africa? And she said, sure, and I went, okay. And uh, that, I, that, was how my, that was my prayer for about going. And, uh, and so on that trip, God changed my life. He showed me his power in ways that I had no idea he could do. Uh, transformed me, I thought he was gonna call me to missions, but instead he just made me be a pastor who loves missions. And so what I want you to think about is this little old lady who loved Jesus invested in a seminary student that she didn't know what that investment was gonna pay off. That investment in eternity is still paying dividends today mm -hmm. because of what she decided to do. And, and we all have that opportunity if we choose to invest in the kingdom. Now, the other challenge that we wanna make uh, today is simply this. Number one, invest in the kingdom. Number two, participate in the mission. Yeah, the mission is to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. Um, and we're inviting all of you to join in and help. Um, you can help by volunteering at events. So you guys can all grab a backpack after service and, and fill it up so that we can give it to a thousand different kids at Christmas. You, we have Serve Our Schools coming up in February. We have Teacher Appreciation in April. Um, but all of these events create opportunities to um, invite people to meet Jesus. All of the Christmas parties that these backpacks are handed out to, people are gonna hear the gospel, the kids and their families. And the events we do in the community are to create moments for you guys to invite people to church. Mm -hmm. And so there are opportunities to. There's also opportunities just yeah. to serve and support the regular ongoing ministry of Calvary on a weekly basis. Uh, we've already mentioned uh, Calvary Kids. Hey, should people? They would love to have you. Please go volunteer with the kids, please. <laughs> yeah, if you can't go to Africa and work with kids, uh, volunteer. Calvary Students, First Impressions, Security, Worship, Tech. I'm probably leaving somebody out. First Aid, Hospitality. There is some way that you can invest and participate in mission by serving regularly uh, in ministries. Yeah, and the last is by going on mission trips. So we have several next year. Um, actually, one this year, we have Peach Brings Trip, which is December 15th, where you can go and hand out some of those backpacks to kids and throw a Christmas party for them. We have two Baja trips um, next year. Uh, one already has a waiting list. Um, and then we have our Honduras trip next September, and there's nine spots left for that. And all of those you can sign up on our website. Um, but I just wanna challenge you guys, and I know that going on a mission trip will change your life. Um, because it's changed my life. I grew up going on mission trips and I actually had someone recently ask me like, did you play sports or do anything like that? And I was like, no, I did mission trips. Um, and I loved it and it's some of um, my best memories growing up. 
Um, and I was actually thinking about the lady that paid for you to go to Kenya, how she didn't know the ripple effect that it was gonna have um, because her investment in you also impacted me um, because that trip sparked your passion for missions and which caused you to take me all over the world growing up. But I was thinking about that very first overseas trip um, because it was so impactful, it changed me radically. Um, so when I was 12 years old, my dad took me to Nigeria um, and it was a trip that God completely transformed my life. Um, it changed my personality because I was so like timid and shy and would have never talked in front of people like this before that trip. Um, but after that trip, I wasn't afraid anymore and I wanted to talk to people about Jesus and the Bible. Um, it changed my everyday life because on that trip, um, I got to experience God's power and his presence in a new and real way. And it's what sparked me wanting to follow Jesus in my everyday life. I wanted to read the Bible and, and know God and follow him. Um, it went from head knowledge to changing my life and my actions. So growing up in church, I had all the Bible answers. Like I never got picked for sports, but if it was like a Bible trivia game, like I got picked for that one. Like that's the only thing. Um, but it, that trip by serving, like it changed my life. And then it changed my future because by serving people in Nigeria and serving God, I realized like this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I can't see myself doing anything else but serving God. How you, Alan talked about like that joy and, and the contentment. Um, that's what I found. And I said, I want to follow God for the rest of my life. And that's what I'm doing um, because of that, that trip and how God met me there and changed my life. And that's why I'm so passionate about missions and want to invite everyone that can to go on mission trips because I know that it'll change your life because it's changed my life. Yeah. You know, Jesus said, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy nor thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Uh, I hope you understand that there is a ripple effect to everything that you do. And if you're not yet a follower of Jesus, can I just encourage you to surrender to him because he will change your life. If you want to talk about that, our prayer team will be at the front. There'll be pastors available after the service. At least fill out a Connect card, drop it in an offering box because we would love to have that conversation. If you are a follower of Jesus, can I encourage you in every way to invest your life in Jesus? Because it'll get better. If you're young, if you're young in the room, in other words, if you're not retired yet, um, the more you follow Jesus with your life, the more dividends you're gonna see in this world as well as in the life to come. And if God has blessed you with resources, ask him again how generous he wants you to be and how you can have an investment that not only impacts eternity, but has a ripple effect through generations for life change. Because we never can see the ripple effect that it's gonna have, but we know when we're obedient that God is gonna bless us and others. Will you pray with me? Father, we love you. We know that you invested in us through the, the sacrifice of Jesus, that you decided we were worth saving, and so you sacrificed your son going all in to give us grace and mercy and a chance to be children of God. And so we just rejoice in that, and we thank you for that. And God, we just want to tell you that we appreciate the, the sacrifice you made. And we want to offer ourselves as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to you, which is our reasonable service of worship. So God, as we continue in this time of worship, we want to give ourselves to you more. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining us today as we explored a powerful reminder to store up treasure in heaven where they truly last. We hope this message encouraged you to set your heart on what matters most. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. And we'd love to hear your thoughts or questions, so reach out to us anytime by emailing us at questions at calvaryaz.com. Next week, we dive into Christmas season here at Calvary. 
So be sure to tune in. Until then, may you seek first his kingdom and walk in his peace. God bless you and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Are you looking for a way to dive deeper into scripture and make it a part of your daily routine? Check out Calvary's Word for the Day daily devotional videos. Visit calvaryaz.com forward slash D-E-V-O and sign up to receive these three to five minute devotionals right to your inbox each day. Our team of pastors and leaders share meaningful insights from the Bible to equip and encourage you in your faith journey. Don't miss out on this opportunity to grow in your relationship with God and connect with the community of believers. Sign up today and start receiving your daily dose of scripture.